Welcome to People and Power. I'm Shireen al -Feki. In today's program, dangerous games in Central Asia. Now, sport can be a dirty business, and it can also be a deadly one, especially if you live in Kyrgyzstan, a former Soviet republic in Central Asia. Three of the country's sporting heroes have been killed in the past year, and all of them were in the running for the top job on the country's Olympic Committee. In Kyrgyzstan, sports are a route to political prominence, but they're also a hotbed of organized crime. And it's these battles for power in and out of the arena which are costing lives and threatening a fragile state. In recent weeks, Kyrgyzstan has been rocked by anti-government protests. A new constitution has been introduced to curb the president's powers. But the country's problems are far from over. People in Power's Juliana Rufus now reports on how politics, crime and sport are playing out in Kyrgyzstan. But be advised, some viewers may find the following scenes disturbing. Kyrgyzstan is a country wrestling with change. Following the Tulip Revolution in 2005, hopes were high that this would become a beacon of democracy in Central Asia. But violent crime is escalating. A series of high-profile murders have shaken the sports world. I've come to find out why three contenders for the position of Kyrgyz Olympic Committee Chairman have been killed. Kyrgyzstan's most famous wrestler, Ratbak Sanapayev, was gunned down in January 2006 after he announced his interest in the committee position. I met his former trainer and brother, Baikid. How do I feel? It's very difficult for me. Coming here, I can see wrestlers fighting. Wherever I look, I can really feel my brother. I can't believe he's no longer with us. It's very difficult for me as his younger brother. Back at their flat, it was clear that this was a family still in grief. They were trying to understand why someone would murder him. Do any of the newspapers that you have here, do, do they have any theories about why he was killed? 70 or 80 percent of the media articles link his murder to his candidacy for the National Olympic Committee job. Radbeck was killed only weeks after he declared his interest in the post of Olympic Committee Chairman for Kyrgyzstan. In this sports-mad country, the post carries a lot of status. It's attractive because the candidate becomes a public figure. He can travel wherever he wants. When it comes to money, the wage is $800 a month. Bucket showed me the local shop where his brother was killed. He went into this little shop. He did his shopping. He came out and at that moment... Here, look. Look, you can still see it. I see. That's the actual bullet hole. Oh, you can see, that's where the bullet came through. But this was not the first killing. The previous chairman, Bayaman Ekimbaya, was also murdered. A member of the Kyrgyz parliament, he was gunned down outside his home in September 2005. I decided to fly to the south, where his widow, Cholpon Sultanbekova, was standing for election in his vacant seat. I wanted to meet her. Situated on the Uzbek border, the Vergana Valley is known for opium production and drug running. Politics and crime often go hand in hand. At the polling station, many people told me off camera that they had voted for Erkenbayev's widow, Cholpon Sultanbekova. Yeah. 
Down the road from the polling station, right on the Uzbek border, is Sultan Bekova's campaign office. The posters made the most of the widow's connection with her husband. That's Ekinbayev on the poster, and underneath it says, People's hero, you will always be remembered. <laughs> What sort of man was your husband? He had an iron will. He was a patriot. He was very good sportsman. He was a good father and a husband. Erkenbayev was also a wrestler and sponsored a gym in Osh. His widow told me that sport played a vital role in his political career. A sportsman who becomes a politician is seen as a man of the people. Sport made him a good businessman and a good politician. I went to the sports center sponsored by Erkenbayev in Osh. Here he's revered as a hero. Erkenbayev wasn't just using this gym to win over voters. He was investing in future muscle. He was our idol. He was a sportsman and a champion. We would like to be like him. Osh abounded with rumors that Erkan Bayev was the godfather of the city, the biggest local racketeer. It's said he was killed because of national ambitions. In Kyrgyzstan, politics and sport are useful tools to run a criminal empire. Three local elections were taking place in Kyrgyzstan on the same day. As soon as I got back to Bishkek, there was important news about one of the other elections. A notorious racketeer, Rizbek Akhmabayev, had received the overwhelming support of his local electorate. A former sportsman, Rizbek had also tried and failed to become chairman of the Olympic Committee. Now, the Kyrgyz Electoral Committee was refusing to grant him victory in the local elections. It was trying to make a stand against him. The chairman of the Electoral Committee has actually called for Akman Bayev to be prevented from taking the seat as an MP because he's under investigation for a triple murder. He's just told the journalist that he's received death threats in response to this announcement. According to the law, if a court is hearing a case against him, then we can't let him stand until the verdict has been reached. Why do you think does the police in this country not investigate harder men like Ahmed Bayev? I think he has friends in very high places. Rizbek Ahmed Bayev was head of the Kyrgyz Fencing Federation. Because of his connections with the sports world, I went to see a respected Kyrgyz sports journalist to find out more. Kanai Alamanov told me that Rizbek, also a former boxer, was known for organizing local football events. Rizbek is not a politician. He's a crime boss, a racketeer. Perhaps this is why he invests his money in sport. And I told me about another death that we had previously not known about. There have been three deaths connected to the elections for the National Olympic Committee. During a meeting of the National Olympic Committee, a man had died of a heart attack. He had opposed the list of possible candidates for the job of chairman. And I was eager to point out that Rizbek had no connections to this death or the two murders. When I met Rizbek, I found him to be very educated and cultured. He didn't interrupt, he listened to me, then spoke and I answered him. I was left with a very good impression of him. Rizbek had clearly managed to endear himself to the sports fraternity. I wondered if any politicians stood up to him. I'm told that the only person who isn't afraid to talk to me about Rizbek Akmanbayev is an NGO leader in here. Edil Baisalov, leader of the Coalition for Democracy and Civil Society, was known to make open accusations against the Kyrgyz Mafia. 
He considered Rysbeck a key member with a stronghold over politicians. The infamous district now. Why is it infamous? Now oh, Rysbeck Ahmed Bay was elected from here. So I will paint it in the black. <laughs> this is a criminal people. So you've got a former athlete who is a racketeer. Yes. Running as an MP here. Running as an MP here. You've got widow of the widow who was a racketeer. Who was a racketeer. Running down here, and you've mm -hmm. got a racketeer and former sportsman here. up there. Yes. The leading politicians, the most influential men, members of parliament, top journalists, uh, you know, great government officials, uh, in, you know, without mentioning civil society leaders, they all refrain, decline from commenting on the case of Respect Ahmad Bayev. It is just like uh, the humanity would never accept rats, uh, you know, in the daylight and, you know, on the dinner table. Uh, just like us, you know, we, won't, we, we, we don't deny rats the right to exist. And they are probably somewhere, um, uh, you know, in every building. But, uh, you know, until there is the state, until there is the civil society, we should fight the rats back uh, to the uh, underworld. I knew from the murders that politics in Kyrgyzstan was a dangerous business. The next day, I found out just how dangerous it could be. We've just heard that Idil, the outspoken government critic who we spoke to yesterday, has been shot in the head and we're on our way to the hospital to find out more. Join us after the break when our reporter, Juliana Rufus, gets caught up in murder and mayhem in Kyrgyzstan. Welcome back to People in Power. In part two of this special report on power, politics and sport in Kyrgyzstan, our reporter Juliana Rufus gets closer to the action than she expected. Shortly after arriving at the hospital, where injured NGO activist Edil Basalov had been brought, Prime Minister Kulov turned up. People weren't sure what had happened, but they were angry and demanding action. If authorities and leadership, if they are in a close linkages with the criminality, and they close their eyes to these kinds of events, it's terrible for country. It clearly indicates that they are together with these criminal people, and it's big danger for country. An hour later, the Prime Minister emerged. He told the press that Idil was in a critical condition, but conscious and stable. The Deputy Interior Minister promised that investigations were already underway. This is clearly treated as a very, very serious incident. The Prime Minister was here and the Deputy Interior Minister. They're very careful not to mention any name, but they're saying it's a crime perpetrated by the person who was most criticized by Idil. I have heard contradicting statements. Some say respect was in hiding, others that he could easily be found in his power base 180 kilometers from Bishkek. People are saying that Rysbek Amatbayev is a very elusive man. We're just on our way to Balakshi now, which is the place where he was actually elected, and we want to see if we can find him. Hmm. This is Rysbek's campaign office, but it's closed. But there's a biography and it says he used to work as a boxing trainer in this region. And since 1994, he's been running unspecified businesses. 
a football pitch and sports center were gifts from Rysbeck's family to the town. The manager told me nobody knew where Rysbeck was. And did he vote for Rysbeck? Does, did, does he think that everybody here voted for Rysbeck? Rysbeck? If he's allowed to take his seat, he'll help everybody, not just those in sport, but everybody. The newspapers are saying that uh, Rysbeck is a criminal. They say that he's a racketeer and that he's been charged with three murders. Did you not mind voting somebody who's accused of having committed those sort of crimes? Where's the proof? If he's really guilty of being a crime boss, he'd be in prison already. So where's the proof? He chose not to no give name? me his name. No. Okay. But thank you very much. Спасибо. До встречи. Thanks. I didn't find Rysbeck, but I did meet someone who had a connection with the attack on Edil, the deputy interior minister who had spoken outside the hospital. He himself had been the head of the Boxing Federation until Hello. January 2006. Very Perhaps nice he could you. make sense Thanks of everything you. I'd seen. What is the link between politics, sport and crime in Kyrgyzstan? There are lots of sportsmen who form their own gangs. They join organized crime syndicates. Why then were there so many murders around the National Olympic Committee? Being closely involved in politics gives you influence. It gets you closer to decision makers, to people who can solve your problems. Criminal gangs want to appear legitimate. He reassured me that the police had sportsmen on their side too. Lots of our policemen are also involved in sport, so it's balanced. The Deputy Interior Minister recommended for me to meet the new chairman of the Kyrgyz Olympic Committee. A former wrestler and previously head of Bishkek Police, Murat Saralinov was endorsed by the Interior Ministry. It was his job to clean up Kyrgyz sport. He had brought in a new team, but said the long-term solution would not be easy. If there was stability in our country's economy, if there was general stability here, then our sports would attract the investment and attention of world sports organizations. If we can become attractive, then we'll solve our problems. In the meantime, there's been no let-up in the murders. Less than a month after I had left, Rizbek Akmabayev was gunned down. He was shot as he left evening prayers at a mosque. His body was taken back to his lakeside home for burial. The International Olympic Committee has threatened to expel Kyrgyzstan if criminals continue to inhabit the Kyrgyz sports world and use it as a recruitment ground. But this is about more than just sport. Corruption, intimidation and racketeering reach all the way to the top. The international community is increasingly concerned. Kyrgyzstan needs to act now before it's thrown out of the ring for good. Juliana joins me now. Adil Baisalov, the NGO leader who was attacked during the making of the film, how is he? Adil is fine, he's fully recovered and what I should point out is that initially in our film we say that uh, he had been shot, those were the first news on the ground. Uh, what we found out much later on is that uh, he had in fact been stabbed but he's well recovered, he's part of the opposition movement that you referred to earlier on. Is it coincidence that he was attacked after speaking to Al Jazeera? Well, you could say yes and no. He certainly wasn't attacked because he spoke to Al Jazeera, but he was attacked because he was very vocal and outspoken. And as I said in the film, he was actually the only person that we could find who would go on the record about the link between uh, mafia politics and sports. What's the latest in the murder investigations? Unsurprisingly, very little. Um, what should be remembered is that a lot of the politicians in fact rely on the racketeers for their campaign financing so they're not going to bite the hand that feeds them. 
What are the origins of this tight link between politics, crime and sport in Kyrgyzstan? They actually go back quite a while. They started during the Soviet era when jobs in the sports world were incredibly prestigious, when these jobs were given to people as reward posts. There was a lot of money involved. The Soviet Union really wanted to shine on the international stage in sport. There was a lot of international travel. And during the end of the Soviet era, the sports world became tied up with the black market economy. And this link is still alive today. And uh, in Central Asia, 75% of all uh, heroin that's going from Afghanistan into Europe passes through Central Asia. So there is certainly a lot of crime going on, a big black market economy. And that link between crime and sport and politics is very much alive. And then, of course, all this escalated into the violence and lawlessness that your film depicts. Now, Juliana, do you think that the new constitution and the transfer of power to parliament is going to stem some of this violence? There's a long way to go, but I think there is reason for some optimism. Kyrgyzstan is now the first Central Asian Republic that has a parliamentary system of checks and balances. But there's also some room for concern because, of course, this uh, could pitch the president against parliament. So let's keep our fingers crossed. Well, on that note of guarded optimism, we'll conclude. Thank you very much. That's all for this edition. But for more on today's story and to share your ideas about people and power in your world, visit our website aljazeera.net slash people and power. Until next time, goodbye.